black and white Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Legends Never Die podcast. This is your host, Hunter Fruget, alongside co-hosts Dustin and Matt. We got Frank on the computer, as always, and we'll get it started today. A lot going on in all sports, baseball, football, and basketball. A lot of moves. We'll start with football, as always. But first, let's get our bold takes. Dustin, what you got? My bold take is that the Patriots go in and destroy the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Temperature, game time temperature, negative five degrees. Tom Brady special, boys. Get ready. Is it really going to be that cold? Yeah. That's what they were saying at work. You heard what uh, Belichick said? Weather don't matter to us. He said, I'm just glad to be in the championship game. You can schedule it whenever, wherever. Yeah, that boy is ready. I agree, Patriots. I hate to say it. I'm a hater of the team, but... They're going to get it done. It seems like their record's always something ridiculous in some extreme condition. It's like negative 10 degrees. Yeah, we're 27-0. and 0. Against the field of quarterbacks in the AFC this year, oh, yeah, we're 16-0. and 0. So, yeah, it's just their year. I hate to say it, but I think it's going to be a better game than a lot of people think. I think close, very close, maybe even a game winner for Brady. That close. I'm uh, curious to see how Mahomes is going to do this time. I want to know if they're going to shut down Tyree Kill. He had a huge game against them last time. But I'm going to go with the other NFL game. I'm going to say it's gumbo week. I'm going to agree with Marcus Peters. It's time for the Rams to eat. Who is Marcus Peters? Where has he even been? I ain't even heard Probably his name in the last six weeks. In the, weeks. On the back end, but he's going to bring that attitude for him this week. That's a nightmare matchup if he lines up on Michael Thomas. I'm Boy, sure they're going to add Tlaib line up on You already know Tlaib's on him, man, oh, man. I like the matchup for Mike still, honestly. So, I definitely disagree there. I'm going who dats, but we'll break into that game in a little bit. Hey. What? Weather update. Not negative five degrees. Seven degrees with 30-mile-an-hour winds. No. Yep. So there's going to be no passing. Oh, there will be passing by the greatest cold weather, windy throwing quarterback in the history of the game. Come on yeah. now, but not the guy that has to throw well, deep balls. Look, I'm sure Tom Brady's got a six and zero record in thirty mile an hour plus winds. Probably or some does. Dumb shit. They, dude, they say his hands are huge, and having huge hands for a quarterback's everything. Look at Philip Rivers. Boy, he can't throw in the cold because he got itty bitty hands. It also helps when you throw a two-yard slant or across the middle to the running back 15 times. Hey, yeah, that's hey, incredible. They're baiting, they're baiting in the Chiefs. They done that to bait in the Chiefs. They could have easily threw it to other guys, but now the Chiefs are going to be creeping for James White, and they're going to bust him with Gronk over and over again. This will be the game Gronk goes ham, and then in the Super Bowl he'll have like two catches. I bet he don't go ham, but he could have two catches in the Super Bowl because he's going to be guarded by those Saints elite linebackers. Oh, God. All right, so let me throw my bowl take into the water. I'm going to switch up a whole sport on y'all and say that James Harden is the best NBA player alive right now on the planet. He's took over as the king. Stop. LeBron is no longer the king. Stop it. I don't want to hear that no more. Stop it. One this on is a one new era. Wins. Harden. Boy, stop Get out of here. With a ref. Yeah, Harden with... always wins with the ref. Yeah. If there's a ref calling fouls, LeBron's Boy. fouling every time. Dude, Bro, he would not be able dude. to stop Harden one-on-one. Harden so. don't even – look, you know there's those oh people who hit, like, clutch shots and they, they get super pumped up, and you're just like, God bless, that dude's amazing. Harden hits a dagger, and this boy don't even know how to get pumped up. This boy just starts, like, like shaking his arms and, like, doing weird stuff. I'm like, bro – do you even know how to get pumped up? Bro, like, he's catching a vibe every time he hey, hits a shot like that. So, trust me. Hey, people are going bananas because this boy scored so many points, but ain't nobody trying to acknowledge the fact LeBron averaged 38, 12, and 11 in the finals. One time. This that boy matter. is now on his 20th game straight with 30-plus points. Okay. All-time record. It, he has now scored 40 points versus every team in the league. LeBron has not done it. I made sure I looked okay. it up. Okay, okay, but forty but points take, against take, every single team. Kevin Durant had a streak a couple of years ago of like seventy games where he scored twenty five points in a row. Yeah, Harden will bust that. 
Doubt Easily. It. He'll bust that with 30 a game. He'll wear out. He's going to average 35 a game this well, year. I can't wait to see that little hamstring pop and him lay down on the floor. He really ain't playing that many more minutes than other players. It's not about the what? minutes. He's it's missing about a whole how quarter hard each game. you got to try. 38 minutes on average, so 10 minutes. Last Almost night, a full quarter. Last night he played over 50 minutes. Yeah, they overtime, so the numbers are scary. Oh, yeah, I do got to mention. He didn't play 50 minutes, though. There's I do, no way. I do got to mention Harden went scoreless at overtime. That's all right. He scored 22 in the third quarter. How you, how you go? Spencer did when he scored 33 in the second half. Went scoreless the first okay. half, scored 33 Harden in the second scored half. scored what? 41 the second As half. As a guy who had a three-team parlay with Nets money line, down by a seven with 50 seconds to go. Look, Dustin and gets excited, though. He said, Dan Wendell or Dan Finkel, whatever, Dan whoever <laughs> we're even talking about, for the Brooklyn Nets. Scored 32 Shoot, in the second he just, half. He just got paid. Good job because Harden scored 42 in the second half. Yeah, but did he win? On some bull crap. He's a one-man show right now. Okay. And still got a better record than the and Lakers. And the Nets are a no-man show. And he's still better than the Lakers. And he's a one-man show. No. He's a one-man wrecking crew. If LeBron, he would go in there right now. LeBron and re- with, he would wreck the Lakers with LeBron. No, he wouldn't. Without even Chris Paul. No. Bet. Chris Paul hurts that team. He sucks. Well, then there you go. I still don't think LeBron would be able to beat the Rockets in a best of seven. I really Stop don't. It. They better sign Curry fast. I mean, Kyrie. They better run to that boy. They better be begging him. No, we don't want Kyrie. We got Anthony Davis and Kawhi coming. I don't think either of them boys are I coming. I don't think Kawhi is going to come. I think Davis might. I don't think Davis is. He almost yeah. beat the Warriors yesterday. Should have beat them. Boy, did y'all see a video of DeMarcus Cousins dunking on Durant, standing over top of him. Yeah, that was weak. Cousins is soft. He's. I think he's going to make the Warriors worse. No. You know they not. got the Warriors not even the number one power rank team right now? Who Raptors is? are number one still in this week's power rankings? I don't think so. I don't either. So, yeah, Harden, best player on earth. Y'all didn't change my mind there at all. So we'll stick with that for now until y'all come up no, with something that definitely not. He's he's ma- averaging forty points a game. He's, he's about to break that record too. Aside from just, Wilt Chamberlain, most consecutive games three, averaging forty a game. Just three weeks ago, on the podcast, you were saying Harden's probably top five. Now you're saying he's the best player in the world. We've been saying oh, LeBron's, he's best. He's best in the league this year. Best scorer for sure. Well, yeah, duh. Scoring anybody can score. Lou Williams comes off the bench, averages like 24 yeah. a game. That's why, That's how you know scoring ain't hard. That's literally the easiest part of the game. Scoring is the easiest. Literally, nothing is easier. Play defense. But it's the most important in my opinion. No. You can play the best defense, but if you don't score no damn points, you're going to lose. Anybody can score. I think offense matters the most, especially no. in the MVP voting in defense. every metric of the game. The Warriors play offense. Every play. metric of the game except the defensive playoffs, player. In the, the playoffs, game. the Warriors play defense. That's all right. We'll see. We still got a long time. No statement can be made about anybody winning a championship or anything until the trade deadline. I'm just going to put it and out we there. we see where teams are getting I'm maxing made. out you our You can book. make the statement, though, that Harden's going to be the MVP of the league. Oh, yeah, 100%. for sure. When you shoot 35 times a game and 25 free throws, of course. Think, he's shooting 30, like 33 shots a game. And think about, he's shooting 20 free throws a game. But think about the eight shots he's, he's not averaging. He's, he's averaging probably 13 free throws a game. But here's what I laugh at when people say that. They're like, bro, yeah, he scored 45 tonight, but he had 13 free throws. Oh, damn, man. If he only had four or five free throws, he would only score 40 then. You're right. No, because he makes Still all his free throws. Still score 40. No, what I'm saying is, last night he had 58 points but shot like 24 free throws. And shot 50% from the field. Not even not even close. Yeah, he did. 15 of 31. No, he was 16 or, of 34. That was in regulation, 15 of 31. 16 of 34 from yeah, the field. Yeah, still not bad. 45 plus percent. And I think he was 5 of 20 from three points. Well, he's above league average shooter what and we, the most elite What we need to talk about league. is how the Rockets shot 73 pointers in one game. Run and gun. That's the style they run. That's the style. The that more ain't shots going you in. shoot, the more chances you got of scoring. That's what. Have, that's what you. They get. don't like slowing it down and running a slow yep. paced offense. That ain't their style. Yeah, but when Chris Paul comes back, that's what they do. Well, that's not what they need to do. They need to run and gun, 
and keep beating teams like the Lakers because Lakers are by far not as good of a team right now. Well, duh. And they should be. Well, here's but, your right, side. Let's jump into football. We'll start off with a recap of last week's games. We'll start with the Indianapolis and Colts game, or Indianapolis and KC game. At Arrowhead, Chiefs came out, did their thing. Mahomes put up big numbers. The running back there, Williams, put up good numbers. And luck didn't look like luck. Yep. It looked like something that rhymes with luck. Yeah, suck. Yeah, luck could throw in the cold weather. Dome quarterback. Now I have to take him off the elite board for another couple months before I put it back on. But I got to add Russell Wilson to the elite board in his spot. So, But anyways, yeah, that t- my takeaway from that game, Colts magically couldn't play defense, which I figured was coming sooner or later. Kind of reminds me of another team in the NFL right now that just magically their defense is good, but they have one good player at, at the Saints. I just – every time I watch the Saints, I'm like, their defense is going to fold. Their defense got no playmakers. They got one good guy. And that's what I think about the Colts. Colts, someone's going to attack the Saints linebackers, and they are trash. Hunter thinks they're good. They're trash. But, yeah. See, my, my thing is, what happened to the, Col- Col- the Colts O-line? Best O-line in the league all of a sudden is getting dominated by one of the worst defenses in the league. Chiefs got a really good D-line. They're just back half. Their back half is terrible. And that's why the best O line in the league, though. That's why they're going to get exposed by the man that doesn't hold the ball for five hours every time. Exactly. But y'all saw the video. uh, They had uh, Tom Brady, uh, Joey Bosa, mic'd up. Yeah, I saw it. And he came around the edge, and uh, Tom Brady had already got rid of the ball, and he was like, "Come on, Tom, hold the ball so I can hit you." And Tom was like, "That's why I'm getting rid of it. I don't hold the ball. I get rid of it." And then Joey Bosa's on the sideline talking about how amazing Brady is. How he sees everything before it even happens. Yeah, he's a member of the elite. I hate on Tom Brady, but that man is the best, really. He's standing up. He was the first one at the stadium the other day. This is some weird type of stuff I would do. This boy's the first one at the stadium. He's up at the very top, like, taking a picture outside of the glass of the suite at the whole field and hyping, like, just hyping his followers up and stuff. He's like, this right here is my field. He was saying all this stuff. It was pretty motivational. He's like, this is my field right here. I will defend this turf with everything I got, all this stuff. And he went out there and blew them boys out. How can you not like Tom Brady? I just don't. I don't I like mean, it. I guess. He's kind of a sissy boy and he's just, just their so cheating good. allegations and stuff. He's just and yeah, so good. You don't I've like never him. been that guy that cheers. I'm, I'm always al- been an underdog guy. He always beat your beloved Peyton Manning, so you don't like him. Yeah. And yeah, and I, and I understand why you don't like greatness because I couldn't stand Peyton Manning and I can't stand Aaron Rodgers and I really can't stand Patrick Mahomes. Other than that, I like everybody. Boy, Except you like Cameron. everybody that wins. You're saying that, and you're the biggest bandwagon on the panel by far. You'll never, you'll this never, This boy, Dustin, ever. earlier this season, my Chargers, sure enough, they got to play the Patriots. Oh, this is blasphemy. Hey, We're hey, all but, blasted Chargers. But, Chargers. Uh, Chargers. I, told y'all, I told y'all, like, week like week <laughs> eight, I said, for this season, the Patriots are my squad. And my squad is the Patriots till Brady's gone. And if they bring in a new quarterback that I like, I'll take them, too. Like, I'm no, thinking, you won't. Dustin will be wearing a Cleveland Brown jersey in less than one year, over, under. I'm taking the under. Cleveland Brown jersey, rocking Mayfield all the way. I That's hate my guy. I'm a Cleveland Brownie for life. I'm now, a Brown bag for ready? life. Y'all ready for it? Tom Brady plays this year, wins Super Bowl, plays next year, retires. Year, no. Plays Super Bowl, wins Super Bowl this year, retires. They don't win a game. Year after next, they draft Trevor Lawrence number one overall. The dynasty continues for another 12 years. I don't think so. I think when they lose him, all hell breaks loose. They fall out. They got the weakest division I've ever seen in my life, and they'll somehow lose But they play a first-place schedule every year. Yeah. The last first-place team they played is when Jets used to beat them. That was another funny stat I'd seen this week on Patriots. Tom Brady has a worse road record, so don't speak too fast against the Chiefs. Worst road record, more losses than wins on the road, first of all, in the playoffs. And Mark Sanchez beat him twice and has a better road record. Yeah, but, uh, but, boy you, lost but you also Marky got a consideration, Mark. taking into consideration, he played seven road games. 
in the playoffs. I was about yeah, to say. Yeah, and he's three and four. Yeah. And Sanchez they, was four and three, eliminating they, him He twice. probably played three games at. Peyton Manning eliminated at, him twice, too. Did you know that? I was about that? to say that. It probably two times at Peyton Manning. Of yeah. course, th- that Denver team was beating anybody. I'm not saying Patriots aren't the best team, but they aren't the best team this year. It's yeah. a Saints year. So that'll bring us into the next game. We had Dallas and Rams. I know Matt don't want to talk much about Cowboys. He's probably a little sad still. I thought they were going to pull it out. The defense didn't show up, and obviously they got ran all over. Yeah, I really thought it was a game tailored for the Cowboys to win. Their forte, stopping the run, getting to the passer. And Rams kryptonite, not stopping the run. The Rams giving up over five yards of carry. All of a sudden, Aaron Donald and Sue in the middle. They just couldn't run the ball. Dak really did good. I thought Dak did really good that game. Yeah, Dak hurt his buddy. Dak See, what I think is going to happen this week is Rams played that style, and they're going to completely switch it up. They're going to think Drew Brees is going to come out trying to light them up play a bunch of zone, not stack in the box, and Saints are going to do the exact opposite. Saints are going to run all over them. Saints? I mean. Teams are completely complacent with letting Michael Thomas eat. They are so worried about Alvin Kamara. It's ridiculous. Good. I think you got to stop Michael Thomas. No, I'd let Michael Thomas eat. All the years we watched Julio eat, they never win. All the years we watched Antonio Brown eat, they never won. You can let a receiver eat on you. Because you're going to throw him 15 to 18 passes a game. He's going to catch 10 of them. Yeah, but That's how, many incompletions. Times, how many times in the past few weeks, even going back to when they played the Steelers, have you seen the Saints third and 15, third and 20, Michael Thomas wide open, well, magically just, wide open, breeze sees He them, just boom. eats zones up. This week, perfect example. We'll get to that game in a second. Back to that Rams-Cowboys game. We'll finish that off a little. I like what McVay, do y'all follow him on social media, Rams team account? No, but I saw his smoking hot wife. (laughs) Yeah, no joke. That boy's younger than some of the players. Tom Brady and Breeze are both older than McVay. Eight years older than him. Bro, McVay's 39. He just turned 40. <laughs> that boy's yeah, eight years old. He said that boy's 32. McVay's, he's Brady old be out there McVay's with a 32. Pain. He's 40. I'm looking it up. They said there's only a handful of players older than him, so he ain't no 32. I could have swore he was that young. Nah, I think he's 40. But anyways, their post game, always like what the Rams do in the locker room. They give out game balls. Sean McVay's 32. Is he really? Yeah. I must have been looking at something wrong. But anyways... McVay, beast of a coach, great offensive mind, one of the greatest. They're debating him and Madden already. Probably got to change the name of the video game. We'll see. But his post-game interviews in the locker room are so hype. Y'all have not seen these. I'm going to have to pull a video up after upload a video in the show notes. But this boy gets his team, gives out the game balls, and this week he hyped them up. He's like, all right, we're going to give out the first game ball. He's like, our Russian attack, 273 yards this week. Where's CJ at? And the whole locker room gets hyped. Give CJ Anderson a, a game ball, and he's like, you can't forget about the best running back in the league. Where's Todd at? Todd comes up, gets his. He's like, we got to thank the offensive line. We got Andrew Whitworth, one of the best to ever do it, and it's his first ever playoff win or uh, conference championship. Where's Andrew? And gives him the ball. And then the team, like, hypes up McVay. There's like, Coach McVay, we got you a ball leading us to the championship in your second year. Oh, my God. All this, dude, it was hype, though. It was almost hype as Breeze's that, pregame. That's crazy because they're getting super hyped before the game in New Orleans. They're doing that after the game in New England. Kansas City's the biggest game they've ever played, and then the Patriots are sitting in the locker room with their feet propped up on the table, not saying a word, except that they're underdogs. I bought my shirt. My shirt's on its way. If I see a Patriots underdog shirt, it will never leave. I'll get it and burn it or flush it's it on down its the way. Toilet. I got the Why white would one. they be considered an underdog, really? You got the best ever, and you're trying to claim yourself as an underdog. That's going to be their way of cheating this year. Vegas will have their back for them being a dog and win it. And Vegas don't want to lose a bunch of money because I'm sure everybody took Patriots futures bets. So they ain't wanting to lose that. Why would you take a Patriots futures bet? Oh, I, and while we're on, this, on the subject of Patriots, we got to uh, gotta give a shout-out to our boy Caleb Steech and at Hunter Fruge. That Y'all said Sony Michelle sucked. I just got to uh, let y'all know that boy had 103 scores in the first half the other day. So, 
give yourselves a round of applause for that one. I don't remember saying he sucked. Yeah. Me personally. Caleb may have. But, yeah, I don't know how Patriots really do it, man. They got these no-name kids, James White, Sweet Feet. What kind of nickname is that? Sounds like some damn Popeye sauce, some Sweet Heat. Sweet Feet. <laughs> Did you know that's his nickname? No. That's his social media name and everything, at Sweet Feet. He's got, no. like, dude, he's got all kinds of stuff, merch and stuff. Yeah, dude. Sweet Feet. That's the second best, <laughs> that's the second best thing I've ever heard. Besides the other day when I told Colton, uh, Aunt, uh, Kevin Durant's Twitter name, Colt, I thought was about to fall out dead. Easy Bunny Sniper. Oh, yeah. That's always been Durant's nickname. Dude, what the heck? Shit, I like that. I've always liked that nickname. Better than the King, for sure. Best name since uh, the Mamba. Well, Durant would want to be nicknamed the King if he was the King. He is the King. King of Rings. About to be. He'll have more than LeBron by the time it's said and done, for sure. I don't think so, because I think he's going to go to the Dicks after this season. But anyways, all right, let's move into the next game. Sunday, we had the Saints game, and we had that Patriots game. We've already discussed the Patriots game enough. So let's talk about them Houdats for a second. Drew Brees fires the crowd up before the game with one of his pre- uh, pumped-up motivational kicks. But they went out there. First play through an interception, good pick by the defensive back, but he just underthrew Ted Ginn for a touchdown. Should have been 7-0 right off the jump, but it started 7-0 Philly, then eventually a bombed out Sean Jeffrey, 14-0 Philly, and that was it. Nick Foles had less than 100 yards passing and no touchdowns the next three quarters combined. So Saints held him under to 100 yards and zero points for three quarters of the game, so I look at it. And Drew did his thing, clutched up. Home win, the stadium was too much. The crowd did their thing. Mike Thomas, big game. Yeah, I I mean, I'm hype on the Saints, but then again, like, what is there to be hyped about other than they're, they got a good quarterback and good home field advantage? I don't think they could go to Atlanta and beat, beat Tom Brady. I really don't. But I will say this right now to make this very clear. If the Saints play the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, I will be the biggest Saints fan on the face of the earth. Oh, come on. If you're a diehard Patriots fan, you can't even say stuff like that. Oh, yes, That'd be I like can. me saying, if the Patriots play the Rams, man, I'm going to have to pull for the Rams. Heck no. You will never hear that come out of my mouth. That's how you know you ain't you a always fan, go, bro. You always go. Boy, stop. You, you <laughs> stay going for teams in the Super Bowl. Yeah, last but year, still, last I'm saying year, if my team still got a chance to be in that thing, I don't care if we're 11 and five and on saying, the brink of a playoff I'm spot. I'm just saying, my I'm team's cheering, winning the Super Bowl, I'm bro. Just, I'm saying, I'm cheering for whoever's playing Patrick Mahomes, straight up. And y'all better just hope like hell that y'all do play the Patriots. Cause I think the Saints probably could beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I but, think we could beat. But the Saints are the not field. beating the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. That ain't happening. Because yeah, uh, right. Patrick Mahomes is gonna shred that weak sauce secondary. But Tom Brady ain't? No. Exactly. So, Saints are winning the Super Bowl. That's because the Patriots are more dedicated to running Shoot, the ball. Shoot, the way the Chiefs defense looked this week, I'd be a little worried if I'm the Patriots. No. We don't get worried. Not at all. But, all right, that'll bring us into – that ends the recap there. We'll go ahead and get into predictions and stuff for this week. So, we'll start with the game we just started talking about, Chiefs-Patriots. Dustin, obviously, Patriots fan. What do you think is going to be the outcome? I think Patriots take this one – 42-17. I think Jeez. you might want to put a mortal lock on this one. Never mind. I forgot the conditions were 30-mile-an-hour winds. I was about to say, I have no idea why they have the first half of over-under. It's like 26. First half. Those, scores, those two teams scored, I think, almost 60 points combined in the first half this postseason. Just last week, their one game, but like 60 points. They both scored 20s in the first quarter. I think Patriots scored 35 first half. But, yeah, so over 26, but at the win, nah, I was going to put a mortal lock on that. I didn't change the name of the premium pick to the mortal lock. Um, Sounds more intense. What you got for that game, Matt? I don't know. I think that win's going to play a big factor. I don't think – I really don't – if the wind is 30 miles an hour – it won't be that high scoring because you can't you can't throw in that really. And then Patriots proved last week that they're gonna be the better running team. 
and I think that's who gets it done. Who's the better run defense? Patriots. Patriots. Patriots right now. Yep, I agree. Just got better coaching. Probably way more discipline. Yeah, we can adapt and overcome. Come on with the cheesy Patriots hands, bro. Yeah. You got to chill with these. We're the underdogs. We will achieve and overcome. Do your You've been job. Watching, yeah. You <laughs> Boston strong for the 10th year straight. <laughs> like, Let's go, on, baby. Bro. Boston it's strong. It's always something. Deflate gate 2019. They'll find a way. They'll sneak Sean Payton's playbook or something if they win this Shoot. one. They'll have something going Belichick's on. been the, being the uh, water You'll boy. You'll find out Andy Reid's been uh, pulling a Kareem Hunt and he won't get to coach. Something <laughs> crazy will happen. No, Andy Reid. Andy Reid needs a Super Bowl ring because he's the greatest coach ever to not have a Super Bowl ring. But that boy, you ever thought he looks like uh, Coach Gray? N- coach Gray for sure, but I was gonna say a straight up pig. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Reid kind of looks like a legit pig. He looks like that uh, Simpsons character, that big dude from way back when. I'm gonna have to pull up a picture. That's why we gotta start adding. Video. Yeah, what you got for score? Score, with the conditions, it's going to make a big difference in the score. I think both teams are still going to put up points, so I'm going to go 31-24 Patriots. So, still going to hit that over. I think it's right at 50-something. So, yeah, they're going to mop them. hate to say it, but hate to say it, Wormy. You got on us last week. We all took the Colts. That boy, he was right. Shout out to Worm, boy. Your Chiefs may do it. Three point favorite. Thought he Brady. was a Packers fan. Nah, he's huge. Chiefs always been since I can remember. Him and Kev Kev. I thought they had the. So shout out to them boys. Y'all are finally in the playoffs for the first time since y'all been alive. <laughs> but all right. So that's our take on the game there, and then moving into the more important, the big game, Saint Rams. You know what I like about these two games this week? They're both. Rematches of two of the best games all season. You know, you know, it's two of the best the regular Chiefs, season. If the Chiefs and the Rams play again, that was the highest rated game of the whole season. If the NFL's nope, wrong, you know what the highest rated game was? What? Bears in Philly the other day. I don't know why Philly was just that team. That's why I can't believe they lost. Their ratings have been stupid. Yeah, but everybody loves the. They Eagles have the worst also. fans besides the Cowboys fans. I swear. I got a picture on my phone. It was like a. Uh, this Eagles fan was like, I hope, I hope everybody, I hope everybody that plays for the Saints dies, and I hope that uh, that a hurricane comes through and floods New Orleans again. That boy was so I was like, hell. hey, bro, calm down. It ain't that big of a deal. But, yeah, I think the Saints are going to win this game. Game with a field goal, they're not going to cover the spread. I just like the matchups across the board. It's going to be a very equally played game, and it's going to come down to the most important and final matchup. But what I do... So you got a two-headed monster running back for Rams all of a sudden. C.J. Anderson done drank out the Gatorade Fountain of Youth or something and come from nowhere, come from the midst of free agency of the whatever list. Damn near the exempt list. He's getting so old and broken. Comes out of nowhere, back-to-back 100-yard game. So, two running backs, good there. Saints, also two good running backs. Then you got your receivers, Thomas, against your secondary for Rams. Tlaib, good matchup. Then it all comes down to the last thing. Both defensive lines, good. Both offensive lines, really good. Then it comes down to the last and final thing. Jared Goff versus Drew Brees. I say it every time. That's what a playoff game is going to come down to. Just like last week, come down to Breeze or Foles. And who folded? Foles. Oh, Sean. Yeah, he <laughs> folded for sure. But, yes, Breeze stood the test of time. So, this week again, he will prove golf. You're just a young butt. You're not ready. You're a California soy boy. You're not ready for this big stage. Yeah, I think the Saints take it at home. I know I called my bold prediction just to just to mess with Hunter, but – Goff has been very unimpressive for me. He didn't even—he hasn't thrown a—he didn't throw a touchdown all last week. So if the running game's not killing you, and they have to rely on Goff, it's over with for the Rams. That's simple fact. 
and I don't think the running game is going to kill them. If I'm Saints, I'm letting golf throw the ball on me to try to plug that middle and stop the run. I mean, I'm At not least letting him half. throw the ball, but I'm definitely making I mean, him I'm, beat me. I'm manning up. Yeah, I'm making him beat me. I'm making me. Brandon Cooks beat Marshawn Lattimore, and it's not going to happen. Speed kills. Speed kills, but Lattimore's getting his vibe back. He's getting his swagger back. Sean Payton was talking about it the other day. He ain't got the big head walking around no more. He's walking around like a leader. They done drilled this man or something. Oh, I had to God. pull up a corny saying, whatever Saints corny saying is, like Patriots. I'm sure they got one. But, uh, yeah, Saints, they're going to do that thing. Like I said, match up well. This is a dome game, so no conditions. Home in the dome. Give me the Saints 38 spot. Putting up big boy numbers. 38, like 24, bro. We're, we're beating them bad. I really think so. I think it's going to be a big difference from last game. I think Eagles were a better matchup for us than Rams. So, give me Saints by 14, not even going to play. The only thing that scares me with this game is that Fletcher Cox dominated the inside. Just think what Aaron Donald's going to do. That's all right. Like, I'm being serious. It's all right, bro. We got... Three all pro offensive linemen. Yeah, but they they're all up. a little banged what up. You, what you got to realize is, it don't matter that you got three because two of them are on the outside. Yeah, but still, I think Andrews Armstead's going to be. Andrews Pete is by I'm far talk- the worst one. Got a broke head, and that's who's going to be matched up against Donald. Nah, he could. He They'll even switch said it. it around. He, they know what they're doing. They'll change up. They that don't front. switch it around. The way they pull blockers and stuff, yeah, they could switch it around. Yeah, but they don't. Just because you're a guard don't mean you're going to be lined up with a D-tackle all the time. Yeah, but we already know that Aaron Donald busts. He takes handoffs from running backs. I mean, yeah, of course he's Aaron Donald. He's going to affect the game, but is he going to be enough? What about Sue? Best run stopper in the league. I disagree 100%. I would go as far as saying Sheldon Rankins is a better run stopper than Donovan. He ain't going to be stopping the run this season. I know. Or next season. But I don't think he – I think we did better when he went out the other day. Well, that's – it's not that y'all know better when he went out. It's the fact that y'all hadn't played starters in three weeks and they were just rusty. Yeah, well, hopefully they knocked the rust off in practice this week and they got back to full speed. But give me Breeze over golf, 100%. What you got, Matt? Go with it. I know you said you're thinking Rams, but I don't know about it. He already said Nah, I just, I just said I got Saints. <coughs> I had to take the the Rams and the ball take to, to screw with you. But, uh, yeah, like I said, Breeze over golf, I agree with you on that. Both defenses have been doing really good. I wasn't really impressed with the Saints offense last week against the Eagles, though, so that kind of worries me. Yeah, for our, uh, my pick of for the Fantasy League fell apart last week. Now it's looking like Carl Hanchi's going to win it. Only guy that got C.J. Anderson. Really? Yeah, go figure. C.J. Anderson or a lot of Rams players? Loaded. They got Anderson, Gurley, Goff, everybody. Instead of the Saints players? Loaded up on Saints and Rams. And what other side? Huh? Patriots and Chiefs. Patriots and Chiefs. Oh, yeah, he's going to win. 100%. Usually that's not how it goes. We got the one and two seed coming out of both sides. Y'all do realize that, It's right? literally the four best teams. Yeah. Since week 10, really, the I four mean, best teams. That's what. That's all you can ask for, really. Now it comes down to who's the yeah, hottest Yeah, Vegas, team. that's all we could ask for. If you're also listening, Vegas, I'm asking for a uh, Saints hints. Super Bowl. Some hints. Yeah, give me a little hints on the way the lines are pulling. What I've noticed lately is when a spread's moving in the way of a team, that means a lot of bets are going in on Take that other team. I watched Colts pull from a a 5.5 down all the way to a 4, which cost me some bets as well as others. But as much as the spread moved, and Adam Vinatieri, just retire, bro. He said he's he's thinking about his future. Hang up the cleats, bro. So, we'll all give the Super Bowl pick based off our picks right there. Saints, Patriots, all the way across the board is what it sounds like. It's meant to be. Dustin was right on week seven of the podcast. Go look at the title. The title is Saints, Patriots, Super Bowl, question mark. Last week's title, Will Nick Foles Fold? Yes, he did. We've been pretty spot on with predicting stuff in the titles. But, yeah, I'd have to go back to our preseason uh, when we first started 20, 15, 20 weeks ago, whatever, of who we gave as our picks. 
because I know obviously I had the Saints and somebody. I just forgot who it was. May have been Saints Chiefs. I can't even remember who I had that it long. Wasn't ago. Chiefs because Mahomes. It probably was Chiefs and Dustin just don't want to admit it. And the Chiefs are probably gonna beat the you Patriots. You didn't pick the Chiefs before you saw Mahomes play. It wasn't before. I think we did it week like week seven. I think you picked. I think uh, Steelers and Saints. Yeah, probably should have been Steelers. Matt picked. If Steelers would have got in. I feel like they would have made a little push for it. If they would have got healthy no. and stuff. Would they who would, would Antonio Brown be playing? If then? he would have played, yeah, it's totally based off that. Yeah, the next forty er Probably so. So what about all these coaching moves? Y'all seen everything going down. We forgot to discuss it last week or just skipped over it. It was in the middle of all the hectic. Best hire, worst hire, best hire, Tampa Bay done a oh, I know yeah. we're on the boys. And worst is definitely the Cardinals. Yeah, I agree. The NFC South just got a lot better if they could find a way to Make Jameis great again. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, Jameis is a Jameis a dog out there on that field, boy. Then they got that boy Fitzpatrick. Nah, uh, my team, my team up and coming next year. Shoot, Jacksonville got a new OC. I, I, I like Nick Foles going to Jacksonville. I think Nick Foles does need to get the hell out of Philly, for sure. He's gonna suck wherever he goes, though. The thing not is, gonna know how to use him. if if I'm Philly, I'll pay him whatever he wants to stay. To stay, anything. Because no, you don't no believe amount. in Wentz. I mean, his he can't ability, stay on the yeah, field. Staying healthy. I agree. Yeah. I'd go as far as to say that Foles would be my quarterback over Wentz. I'm not too big on the Wentz train. Oh, he's amazing. I'm not too sold on When he's on the field, healthy, 100%, he's better than Foles. What it is, is he's they – He's better than golf, for sure. They don't run They don't run plays that are good for him. They run – or that are good for the team. They run plays that make him look good. Like, they run the most basic routes and concepts with Foles, and then all their trick stuff with Foles, and then Wentz gets out there, and they got this dude doing five-step drops, scanning the whole field, trying to scan the field for five seconds – then he's got to move around, try to make an extra play, and he does it 40% of the time. And he looks amazing, but it's just too much. It is too much. And anybody want to say anything on basketball or anything else? Been keeping up with some college ball, MLB, a little quick. College rundown. basketball tuned in Saturday, Duke versus Virginia. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to go out on a limb and say Virginia is going to win that. Is it in Virginia? It's at, it's at Duke. Uh, Duke's gonna only going to lose to teams who run a zone defense. They run a zone, don't they? No. They run a press the whole game. They still have the best defense in the league or no? Yeah. Yeah. But they run a full court game. press, and to be able to uh, do full court press, all five players have to be able to move with the ball. And uh, I think uh, I think Duke's five can all move with the we ball. We already seen a top ten upset this week. Duke lost. We may see another one tonight, number six, Michigan State. At Nebraska, Nebraska's won 20 straight games at home, so it's going to be a tough win. I was reading up on it a little. Give me Michigan State, baby. Michigan State also two starters not playing. Langford, which is a main piece of their offense, isn't playing. Yeah, I hope you didn't already take it, this boy's facial expression. Nope, but I'm not <laughs> taking it no more. Yeah, that's, I am taking Murray State tonight by 10 and a half. They got two of their main guys out. But, yeah, Michigan – they look tough, still undefeated, right? They've got to be the one seed once the new rankings nope. come out since Duke one lost seed's again. Tennessee. Really? Yep. They just will not put Michigan at what, number well, one, bro. Well, Michigan ain't played nobody. They played they North be Carolina going over one time. At Nova. They be well, Nova sucks. And they were runner up in the national championship last year. I'd have them number one. You agree, Matt? If you're runner up in the tournament and you're undefeated to start the season. It, it goes. One. That's like high school baseball. Know. That's like high school baseball. You're like, oh yeah, well they, they're twenty seven and zero, but they played twenty four three A's, one five A, and two four A's or two three A's. But and then look at Tennessee. They've already played Kansas at Kansas, Gonzaga on the West Coast, they North Carolina. I mean, look, they, Tennessee's nice. They score like a hundred a hundred points a game. Yeah, they're going to make another run this year. I believe that. Admiral Schofield leading that team. Go Tigers, baby. That's all I got to say. LSU doing their thing. But, all right, we'll leave it there. 
will start next week. We'll have the Super Bowl. We'll have a week in preparation off between the two. So we'll get more into our other sports, MLB, and we got a big UFC fight this weekend. I got to mention a little bit about it. We got Dillashaw and Cejudo matching up UFC fight night, Saturday night, first ESPN card, four ninety nine a month on ESPN Plus, way better than $60 a pay-per-view. So I'm definitely going to be subscribing now. We'll see Dillashaw take on Cejudo. Cejudo, y'all might not know his name, but he beat Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, who hadn't lost in a very long time. But yeah, he upset him and took the flyweight title. Dillashaw, I'm sure everyone knows him, the 125 champ, the bantamweight champ. He's the real deal, so he's going for two belts, trying to be the fourth to ever do it. And there's a couple other good fights on that card. Got Cowboy Cerrone fighting, and you got that uh, fine chick, Paige Van Zandt, that was on Dancing with the Stars. But yeah, she's in a big fight. So that's some good fights for a fight night card. Usually you don't have a championship fight on a fight night card. But that's all there, and we'll see y'all next week. Quick shout out to our sponsors, Legend Gear and Apparel and Legend Wooden Artifacts. You can check out Legend Gear and Apparel and get a comfortable shirt like the one I'm wearing now. Nice, casual watch. All kinds of stuff on the site at legendgear.co. Use promo code LND10 for 10% off. And we'll be doing a soft launch for the new website, Legend Wooden Artifacts, coming later this week or next week, so y'all stay on the lookout. We'll have all kinds of stuff on there, like our primitive, middle age style arrowheads and custom knives, cool stuff like that, and other woodworking projects. But yeah, check our sponsors out, and we'll see y'all next week. Go Saints! Black and white